uh, you know, the conversation of, of what it does entail, um, mm -hmm. you know, what my role is and, um, you know, what needs to be done to comply for these projects because uh, it's pretty stringent and a lot of people aren't aren't aware of what needs to be done to get an existing home to comply with new construction standards. And honestly, that's our bread and butter. Um, we've done over 2000 projects. If about 90% of them are home additions, renovations, and alterations to, home, to existing homes. Some are new yeah. ground up homes, but the same thing applied to for those, you know? So, sure. um, so I, I, I've been, uh, it now it's hitting the bucket. Like now we have to know how to do this stuff. Cause um, it's yeah. part of our livelihood. Like these projects are getting held up by the building departments and no issuing permits because we don't have, we used to do the comp checks and rest checks, which we know how to do, yeah. but, but the hers is another, a whole nother animal. And there's probably four or five people I know in the entire state that know how to do this stuff um, that are licensed to be able to do these things. So it's becoming a bottleneck for a lot of our jobs. It really is becoming a bottleneck. Yeah, you're, you're not alone. Um, and it's catching a lot of people off guard. Uh, a lot of architects, uh, a lot of builders, um, you know, architects are designing projects, not with the understanding that the entire home has to be included in the HERS rating. And, and that's really, you know, it's killing a lot of projects is, is what's happening. And I think it's going to create a lot of lawsuits too, because architects, oh, you're not knowing what you, what you're doing. Um, you're costing me time. This, these developers buy these properties with a high interest rates now with the interest rates that they have. Oh, they're, yeah. not, they're, they're being held back three, four months to, to get a permit and do their developments and, and renovations. It's, it's really creating a lot of friction. And, um, it's kind of, yeah. you know, so I, I'm one of those guys that, uh, that typically adopts things quicker than most people. By the time anybody else adopts it, I already kind of been doing it for a while. So like I've been interested in this and sustainability and green practice for a long time. Yeah. So, um, Oh, I'm, it's here. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Energy here. modeling, 3d, all of that stuff. I did it with my home. My home is, uh, I don't know, 120 year old building. And I already, I already solar panels are coming in tomorrow. It has, it has a slate roof and now it's, it's going to be shingles. It, it already has a, uh, you know, shingles, um, heat pump system already installed electric, um, you know, I thought I was going to have to upgrade, nice. upgrade my panel, but I, I didn't have to, cause it didn't have that much load. Um, you know, and weatherization was done, spray foam insulation, you know, in some areas blown in, in some areas that we couldn't really do anything else because we're not going to open the whole wall, but, um, yeah. while, while so living you, there, who do you have joining this meeting? Uh, Marco Severino, if you can, if okay. not, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. Yeah. I, I do not have a lot of time. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, again, so you have a lot of projects that are additions, thousand square feet and over, right? So that's one of the triggers for the HERS rating. Mm -hmm. And and when that happens, the addition along with the existing home has to comply with the new HERS rating standards. The only way to for that to happen is to gut the entire house, replace all the windows, replace all the equipment. We're having a hard enough time getting new construction jobs to pass these HERS ratings, let alone anything that's existing in a home. Any part of an existing home that remains will probably make the blower door fail. So that that's the, the biggest thing I wanted to discuss with you. So that that's the first trigger for requiring a HERS rating and what that actually means. If you renovate 51% of a home, it now has to comply with the HERS rating, which means the other 49% has to be gutted and brought up to new construction standards. So those are the biggest hurdles you have with the renovation alteration meeting the HERS rating standards. So going into projects, people need to know we need to know that, right? We can't just do a hers rating on an addition. Is that something you were aware of, not aware of? No, I was. I was. I was even yeah. told that like this, the siding will have to be changed. Like I, I, I've been talking to some people that the whole thing 
it, it has to, uh, mm-hmm. an inspector in Braintree was talking to me. So I, I'm aware of that. Yeah. Now, a lot uh, of people are not. <laughs> yeah. Now, what, what does it, what does it entail? What's the process like? What's the cost? I know you, you don't have a whole lot of time, but I want to, what I want to do, Bill, ideally is yeah. I have to include this as a basic service within my contracts. I have to. I cannot just say, find your own hair rater at the end because they're going to fight me because they didn't get it on time and they didn't, they didn't have a plan and they didn't know what they were doing. So I have to now as a boilerplate say, expect X amount of money to be spent on a hair rater and entails X, Y, and C more to be discussed. Something needs to be there so that it's all included on my initial negotiations. And I can say, Bill, I sent you an email, address 23, blah, 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 lockbox number 25, go in whenever, do it. You got it. Because it has to be done prior and after. That's what I understand. Prior to doing any work and after doing the, the addition, right? So the, fir- the first part of the hers writing is from the plans. So we're doing a projected hers writing to project how we're going to meet the energy code. So that's that's done from the office. The second part is inspections in the field for a mandatory insulation inspection. At that point, I go out there, I confirm you put in the equipment. We talked about the windows, the R values align, it's spray foam. Uh, I do my inspection. What I'm doing now with all renovations and all multifamilies is I'm suggesting, highly suggesting that I come back out after drywall and do blower door testing. These older homes with the amount of dust and debris that ends up getting left in the building, spray foamers are spraying right over it and they are not passing the blower door test. So at that point, there's a product called Aero Barrier it's an air sealing method for buildings. They come in with tripods, set up their apparatus, it vaporizes caulking, and they set up blower doors and drive that caulking through the building to the outside. And eventually it starts sealing all the cracks until we get to the building leakage number we need to be at to pass the HERS rating. So that both of those items are additional costs. A typical HERS rating on a, a typical size house is going to be 1500 to 2000 That covers the projected rating, the midpoint inspections. At the end, I come out and do blower door testing, duct testing, collect the rest of the information on appliances, lighting, um, the rest of the equipment that's been installed, uh, and generate the confirmed HERS certificate. That's what you need for occupancy at the end of the project so that's that's the basic hers rating it's the same for new construction as it is for for existing with new construction we can typically skip that post drywall blower door because you know we we're already using foam it's brand new we know we're gonna we're gonna hit the numbers for the most part um there are people out there that are anti-foam. If if you go that route, I would suggest again the the post blower door, I mean post um, drywall blower door, and then if we're not hitting the the building leakage numbers, you get the aero barrier company in, and that for a single family can be two to three thousand dollars. For multifamily units, it's around a thousand to fifteen hundred per unit. Um, basically to air seal the, the units up. So my difficulty right now is I could not be any busier. I'm two weeks out right now. And every day <laughs> plans keep pouring in. So for me to be able to jump on your work, you know, three, four, five, whatever you're, you're sending my way, uh, it's going to take some time, you know, um, that's, that's just the reality of it. Now the one for Alberta, even, oh, even, I lost your, there you are. Yeah. Even for Bill, the one, uh, oh, Marcus is here. Marcus uh, is joining. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, pleasure to meet you. Um, yeah, you too. Thank very, very helpful information, Bill. I was actually going to ask you in regards to timeline. Um, I'm, I'm anticipating, if, even if we send you, let's say, schematic drawings, um, 
you know, so we can plan ahead. You said that typically, what will be the typical time that something like that will take you to, to create a, a, a hearse rating um, report? So Marcos, just so you know, so first is a projected rating of, from the plans. Then there is a midway during construction service, and then there is a final test. Uh, the blower test happens at the end. So the, the projected rating wouldn't be that much time, right, Bill? It wouldn't be something that you need to go to the site or anything like that. Um, I don't need to go to the site, but but it's it's a decent amount of time on my end to, to do that, you know, mm -hmm. um, especially with the backlog that I have uh, with my existing customers, you know. Um, you said so, two, I, so would it be two weeks for the projected? I, I'm, I'm at least two weeks out right now. Yep. Okay. Marcos, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying in terms of time, uh, Bill, yeah, we're talking about now, but I'm, I'm planning, you know, months from now. Um, typically how, how long would a process like that take you, Bill, like to be safe? Um, would it be like one, three one weeks? to two weeks? One to two weeks. One to two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. That that's what it's been typical for the last thirteen years that I've been doing this. This year okay. has been insane um, with the code <laughs> change we just had in July. Um, yeah, it's 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 just been amazingly busy. I meant yeah, to ask you, I, where did you get my name? Um, I don't know. Maybe John Babuzo. Do you know John Babuzo? He's an inspector now. He used to be the inspector in Mefford. Now he's in Woburn. I think it was him. Possible. I think it was him. Possible. Uh, Bill Ayers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was it was it was John Babuzo. He he okay. used to be. Um, I just did some stuff recently in Medford, so maybe he did. My name just stuck in his. Uh, yeah, in his head. it was John yeah. Babuzo. He is now uh, the building. I just got saw his text message. Uh, he's the building inspector now in Woburn. One of them. There are three there yeah. now. But um, but yeah, but he he used to be in Metford for a very long time and worked for the Nelson Group. Have you heard of the Nelson Group? I have. He yep. he when he retired from being an inspector, he went to the Nelson Group for a couple of years and now. Oh yes 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 yes, I know who he is now. He's yep. very very good friend of mine. Love the guy. He's on, he's on his boat now. Yeah, and with his grandchildren, <laughs> enjoying life, that's for sure. Love the guy, love the guy. He even came here and did a training here, which is another thing. We may want you to come to our office and pay you for that time to do a training if possible, if we, if you would be okay with that, um, to kind of talk to all the designers about this stuff, you know? Um, I think it's going to help everybody in the long run um, if, if you're open for that. Um, is training as far as what? No, nah, I just saying, hey, guys. You get a home edition. Here's the things you got to worry about from the design point of view so that you can pass at the very end. Because don't don't design the way you've been designing for the longest time because you're not going to pass. You got to start doing X, Y, and Z so that, you, so that me, Bill, can give you the rating that you want and you don't get mad at me at the end of the day because I can't give it to you, right? So, that's, yeah, I, so that I can I, tell I my mean, clients the same thing, right? It's exactly what yeah. you just told us, I guess, but to, to the whole office. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we can talk about that in the future or do a Zoom call. But, you know, bottom line is any anything on an existing home is going to need to be spray foamed. It's really the only way to even have a chance of air sealing the, an existing and home. And that's the biggest issue. So air, air tightness. That's it. Building leakage is the biggest driver of the HERS index. Everything else is going to be the highest efficiency equipment. You're most likely going to be going to heat pumps because we get a HERS credit of three points, you know, so th those are just givens, you know, if, if they're going to give us three HERS index points to go all electric, it's, it's probably the way to go okay. instead of, you know, fighting and trying to get to the lower index that we need uh, if you use fossil fuel. Um, but, you know, there's still people out there that they're using gas regardless and, and they they'll do whatever it takes to, to keep it so um it can work both ways uh it's just more difficult all right so next steps bill I'll, I'll be sending you um the one most critical that i need <laughs> and okay. then uh we'll get you on the schedule um so you said between 1500 and 2000 so once i send you so alberta i sent it to you so you could you, could you just send me a quote like a formal yeah quote? i'll send you an agreement uh mm -hmm. send me the plans which one you're talking about 
uh, I'll get an agreement to you, a start invoice, um, and sign the agreement, return it, get the payment out. And as soon as I have that, I get you on the list. And that, the, you know, that can jockey by people paying or not paying or signing agreements or not signing agreements. You know, everybody's in a rush. And then I send stuff out and some people don't send the stuff back, you know, so. <laughs> no, we're on the same page. We, we're on a business. That would, work, that would work good for you. <laughs> No, we are yeah. in the same business, brother. We are in the same business. It's the same thing. Yeah. They they yeah. say, when are you going to have a buy? And I'm like, well, as soon as you, the, the ink dries <laughs> on your check, you know, sign the check and win the agreement. And then we I'm can just, talk about that, you know. Just way too busy to do it any other way. You know what I mean? It, I love it. It's as simple it, as that. You know, and I'm yeah. glad you're busy, man. Keep it up. Keep it up. You're, you're, you're doing a really good thing. So I think I don't have any more questions, and I know you have a whole lot to do. So, uh, Marcos, I'll be sending Alberta to him, and then we'll take it from there. All right. All right. Best remainder on your bill. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, both of you too. All right. Bye-bye. I'll look for your bye. email. Take care. Thank you.